Hey everyone, and welcome back to Small Batch Devs. My name is Austin. And I'm Elliot. Today we're going to be going over the testing framework known as Cypress, and we're going to be showing you how to install it. We're going to write some custom tests, and then we're going to run those tests. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. We would definitely appreciate it a whole lot. Without any further ado, let's jump into it. So Cypress is an all-in-one end-to-end testing framework that's aimed at making testing and writing tests easier for developers and QA engineers. So if you are unfamiliar with some of these testing terms that we're going to be using throughout this episode, end-to-end uh, -end testing just means that you're going to basically be emulating a user using your application. And this can be emulating button clicks, emulating data being entered into a form, uh, na navigating between your different pages on your application. And the important thing here is we can emulate these different interactions and just ensure that your app uh, responds appropriately to these different interactions. There are other types of tests called unit tests, which aim to test a single piece of functionality in your code, like a single function or a single method that you've written. And there are also integration tests, which test the interaction between multiple units of your application or multiple units of your code, such as uh, different functions calling each other and just ensuring that the integration there is sound. And for those of you that are interested in diving into how Cypress works or maybe contributing in some way, Cypress is an open source project. So check that out if you're interested in doing some work on that. One last thing about Cypress is that it only runs JavaScript tests and it will only test the front end of your website. So there's no server side testing within Cypress itself. So why would you use Cypress? Well, test frameworks can be pretty tricky and limited to some degree when you're trying to test your code. Also, when you're installing different frameworks and assertion libraries, such as like Selenium, you may have to uh, spend a bit of time actually installing these different packages just to get up and started. But Cypress makes this so much easier. The whole testing process is an all-in-one solution, so you don't need to install any additional packages or Selenium. And Cypress gives you more control over what you can test and makes it easier to actually test things. It is important to note, though, that Cypress is specifically for end-to-end -end testing and not for the unit testing. So how does Cypress work? Well, Cypress is going to run your JavaScript tests via the Cypress NPM SDK module. Basically, what it will do is actually open up a browser and start running your tests on the browser. At the time of this recording, uh, Cypress does run on different browsers such as Chrome, Edge, Firefox, and a couple more. But you can also run your tests in a headless mode. And basically, this is extremely important if you're trying to run your tests on a GUI-less server, um, like a Linux server. Um, so yeah, it can run without a GUI or a browser GUI. Cypress can also be utilized to test different browser or window sizes. So you can use it to also test mobile browser sizes and see how the responsiveness of your app performs and test that functionality as well. Cypress also supports hot reloading when you're writing your tests, so you can quickly uh, write your new tests or update tests and see them in action. What's also really cool is that Cypress has a time travel feature, which allows you to click or hover on any step in any test and see your application in that state when that step was performed in that test. And this is really helpful for debugging and just seeing how your app flows throughout the tests. Cypress also provides a nice dashboard for seeing some analytics about the tests that you're running. Like we mentioned earlier, Cypress does have a headless mode, so you can integrate this with your CI CD pipelines. Cypress can even integrate with Slack, so you can send notifications to your team whenever uh, tests fail or other status updates occur. As far as pricing goes, at the time of this recording, Cypress has several different pricing plans. The free version comes with three users and 500 testing recordings. So this means you can actually go back and watch previous tests that have run. The free tier also lets you run tests in parallel. And this feature along with the test recordings um, 
are only utilized if you're running them on Cypress's servers and using the Cypress dashboard. The free chair also comes with a CI CD pipeline integration as well as the Slack integration that we mentioned earlier. All right, so before we jump into the code, you might be thinking, I already have test files that came with my JavaScript framework, like Karma tests for Angular. It's fine to have multiple testing frameworks like this, um, because most likely those other test files will be used for unit tests and integration tests. So to start using Cypress, you'll first need to install it with the command that you can see on screen, which is just npm install cypress dash dash save dash dev. And this will just add the Cypress NPM module to your developer dependencies in the package.json. So it's important to note that because we are using Angular and TypeScript that we need to be on a TypeScript version 3.4 or higher. You might have to make one additional change before you can actually run Cypress. And this is specific to having a browser's list file in your project files. Uh, for us, this came from Angular uh, you may or may not have this file, but if you do, just rename it to .browserslistrc, all one word, and that will ensure that you can run Cypress successfully. Now we're going to run Cypress open in our terminal. And what this will do is it will open Cypress and perform some first time uh, setups, such as creating some test folders and some example tests for us. So whenever you open Cypress for the first time, you'll see this window pop up and this is just the Cypress test runner. You'll also see a bunch of spec files already listed in here. And these are some of the files that Cypress generates that provide example tests. And this is really good because you can see how they're testing different elements of these test sites. And you can kind of copy these and use them yourself. Now to get started, you can click on any of these spec files to run the tests in that file specifically, or you can click on the run 19 integration specs up in the top right, and this will run all of the tests together. So let's click on one and see what it looks like. So if we click the action spec JS file, another window will pop up, and this is actually the browser that is going to be running the Cypress tests. And you can see it's running them right now. It's going through each step of those example test files and showing us what it looks like on the screen. So now we're going to actually delete all of these example tests that Cypress provided for us and start writing some of our own. You can do this with the Cypress test runner open and it will go ahead and auto update uh, when it detects changes. So going over some of the folders that Cypress generated for you, uh, we have the fixtures folder first, which is used for holding static or mock data that's specifically used for your tests. The integration folder is where your actual Cypress tests will go. And this is just where Cypress looks by default. Next up is the plugins folder. And this folder has an index file where you'll put any custom plugins that you need to run during your Cypress testing. And what's really important is that this index file runs before every spec file. The support folder also has an index file that runs before every uh, spec file. But what you want to have in this index file is reusable behavior such as custom uh, commands and global overrides. So one last thing is that we actually need to run and serve our application before running our tests. Now take note of whatever port your application is served on locally, as we'll have to update our Cypress config with that port. So for us, we're going to be running the ng serve command because we're inside of an Angular project. Now we need to update our Cypress config to actually use this base URL that our app is running on. And this is important when we're using our visit function calls for different navigation changes. And the Cypress config is really just the cypress.json file that is at the root of your project. So now we're going to write our first Cypress test. We're going to create a new file in the integration folder and we're gonna call it homepage.spec.js. And we're gonna name our files according to which page of our application that the tests are gonna be focused around. As soon as you create this file, you'll see it pop up in the Cypress test runner if you have that open. Then we can click on this file and as we're writing tests, it will reload that file and automatically run our tests as we're writing them to give us instant feedback. Now, as you see here in our file, we've actually got a test already written and this is a describe block with a sub it block. And so what's happening here is 
The describe block is really used to scope functionality in a test. And then the it block just specifies a single test. So the commands that are used to verify a single piece of functionality in your application. So in our successfully loads test here, um, we are just basically testing some very basic functionality. We're using that dot visit, visit method that we mentioned a little bit earlier um, to actually navigate to forward slash, which is just the base of our URL. And if we can navigate there successfully, then the test will pass. So if we go ahead and click on this integration test, we'll actually go ahead and run the test. And because we were able to navigate to our homepage, um, the test passed successfully. So to perform actions on different elements in your Cypress tests, you can target them by their DOM element IDs, their CSS classes, their DOM element types, and as well as any text that's contained within those elements. And there's a couple other ways to target them as well, but we won't go into them for now. In our next test here, we're actually going to be navigating to a different page and ensuring that the page we navigated to is the correct page. Um, so the first line in our test here, we're visiting the base URL again, as we did in the previous test. And then we're looking for anything on the page that contains the text about us. And it just so happens um, that the about us is a button that we can click. There's other ways we could target this element, but we don't have IDs or anything um, specific about the buttons as of right now in our HTML. So we're just going to be using the text um, and then we're going to click on it. And what we should, in, in our next step of the test, uh, we're getting the URL. So we should, we should have navigated to a new page when we click this, this button. And now we're checking by using the include keyword in the, uh, the first parameter of the should method that um, the, the URL contains slash about. So if we run this test, um, we should see some navigation taking place. It is also important to note that in this should method call, the first uh, argument there can be several different things like include, not include, exists. Um, there's a list of keywords that can be put in this uh, method to actually validate and check for certain things on the page. So we went ahead and ran that second test that tests our navigation. And what we can do here is actually demonstrate some of the time travel features that Cypress includes. So if we click on the test after it's done running, you can see all of the steps that it took. Now, if I hover over any of these steps, the browser on the right will actually change to what the application looked like at the time of running that step. So you can see if we go and hover over the slash, the visit slash step, the screen changed to show that it was on the slash route originally. And then we can hover over the contains to see which element Cypress finds. And then we can hover over the click to see a little red dot that says, hey, I clicked on this element here. And you can see that Cypress is flashing to a before and after the click. And this is really useful because it shows what our application did after, immediately after Cypress clicked on that element. This is just a fraction of what you can do with Cypress. It's really the tip of the iceberg with these few tests that we've shown you. Uh, we do plan on doing some more follow-up videos in the future concerning testing authentication features uh, and several other ideas that we have. So stay tuned for those and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Maybe even hit the little notification bell and you'll be able to get notified when we upload maybe those uh, continuation of Cypress videos. Also, be sure to check out our podcast. It's called the Small Batch Dev Podcast. It's on all of your different podcasting platforms. We'll leave some links down below in the description. As always, thank you very much for watching this video and we'll see you very soon. Peace.